a review of Fourier's theorem, Doc, for the physics of sound and music. I'm going to start with the YouTube video posted by Quantum Kiwi here, and this shows us how a square wave, a ramp wave, which is also called a sawtooth, and a triangle wave can be made from the harmonics. Here we go. The square wave uses only odd harmonics, and as we add the harmonics, we're getting the square wave. We are ironing out these wrinkles. We get more wrinkles, but they're smaller and smaller. Notice the little overshoots here. This is the Gibbs phenomenon. Here is the silver bullet review sheet for the next exam. And the Gibbs phenomena is the rabbit ears effect. See, when many harmonics are added, they don't go away. They stay there like a little Batman situation here. Look at that, see? the rabbit ears, the Gibbs phenomenon. Look at that with all those harmonics we have here up to harmonic 36. Nice. It's amazing how sine waves can be used to make a square type of shape. We're up. We did it. Fifth, about 50 harmonics looked pretty good. Here is the rant wave. Now the rant wave uses all the harmonics, evens and odds. And look at that. Let's stop that here. We're at harmonic 13, and you can see the ramp structure already showing up. Harmonic 24, look at that. And once again, little ripples get ironed out as we add more and more harmonics. And finally, the triangle wave. The triangle wave will use odd harmonics like the square wave. Notice that with the triangle, we get a very good triangle rather quickly. Look at that. That's very, very nice. And we have here, well, now we're up to harmonic 21, but look at that. Very, very rapidly we get a nice, a nice picture. Well, let's look at the text here. This is Fourier's theorem. Fourier's theorem says that one can construct any periodic wave having frequency f using sine waves with frequencies f, 2f, 3f, 4f, the harmonic series. And you just saw that with that video from YouTube for three periodic waves. In class, we went over in somewhat detail an analysis of why this works. For example, here we have one sine wave to approximate the square wave. Notice that we use the same frequency as the square wave frequency. And notice that this could improve if this wave could be pushed up a little bit and then brought down here and pushed up brought down, pushed up and brought down. And if you look at those changes that are needed, the corrections, it's a wiggle, wiggle, and a wiggle. Three wiggles in the space of one wiggle. You're talking three times the frequency, the fundamental. That's harmonic three. And if you do it with a gentle one-third of the height compared to like what you had for the sine wave, just one-third of the way up, then you get this nice correction and it looks better we have two humps here instead of the one hump. Two humps reflects the fact that we added two odd harmonics. Then we analyze some more and see that we could make it even better if this came up, this came down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and that's one wiggle up, down is one wiggle. So one, two, three, four, five. That's the fifth harmonic, which will wiggle in step like that and do the job. And at one fifth the height, you get then this effect. Notice the three peaks here, and we have added three odd harmonics one, three, and five. And we can keep adding these, and the Gibbs phenomena starts to become apparent. The Gibbs phenomenon here with the little rabbit ears. Well, the uh, spectra here for the various waveforms are given here by this chart. And here you can remember this easily from the visual. In other words, the sine wave has to be first. It's the simplest, pure waveform. And the most complicated one for your eardrum would be to push it in and yank it out and then let it rest for a while and do it again. So these are the easiest wiggles up here. Look, triangle's not that far off, see, from that. And the square, once again, has, you know, crest and troughs not too far off from the triangle uh, compared to this difference here. This is a big difference 
uh, when you compare that to the sine versus the, the square. So by the visual representation, you can see that the ramp breaks away from this nice up, down, up, down wiggle that you're getting for the first three. This slides up, yanks down, slides up, yanks down. So that's using your eardrum compared to these others. You're sliding here, your eardrum's getting pushed in and all of a sudden it gets yanked down and pushed in again. And this is the most uh, difficult, see, on your ear drum. Uh, in that sense, it sounds like a raspy. This is raspier when you come down here. This is the pure innocent whistle. So weaker partials up here, which means that the Fourier spectra is going to have less uh, stuff added in, or you might say less junk, all right? This is a pure sine wave. And then here, more partials. Well, the partials are rich, and they help make the sound raspy and, and richer so it's a subjective thing which you prefer uh, the pure sine wave or the richer uh, tones here how can we remember this uh, set of numbers uh, before we do that let me just show you another representation the bar graph the bar graph represents these numbers by bars where for the square wave here you had one full cup of the first harmonic then one third of the third harmonic one fifth and so on but how are these numbers easily remembered well here's the deal we go to the um, silver bullet review sheet here for the next exam and notice that we have the order here that corresponds to the nice visual uh, simple wave sine then triangle and then square and getting more and more different here compared to the sine wave. Here's how I remember this chart. Sine wave is pure. One sine wave, the first harmonic, nothing else, all zeros. The last one, easy to remember, all ones. Then what you do is you sculpt this down, one, one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one seventh, one eighth, one ninth. That's an easy rule. That's your ramp. To get the square, you kill the evens and have the same numbers. And to get the triangle, you square the square, literally square the numbers. One times one is one. Zero times zero is zero. One third of one third is one ninth. See, zero times zero is zero. Five times five is 25. So you have the one over, one over, and you just simply square the bottom number. Uh, here, uh, that works, or you could just square the fraction. Either way it works. One over seven squared is one over 49 and 1 over 9 squared is 1 over 81. And we're finished. We have memorized an infinite amount of numbers in each case because these go on forever five times. So that's the review for the Fourier synthesis.